This is our hexapod. Uh, we decided we wanted to make a hexapod mainly because when we were trying to find ideas for the project, we kind of realized that no one had really done a project where they made a walking sort of robot. So we kind of wanted to challenge ourselves a little bit and just make something that looks pretty cool. So getting into it, uh, we are using a Arduino Mega because our code is too large to fit on an Uno. And we have 12 servo, motor, servo motors that um, are for each leg, which allows for two degrees of freedom. And these servo motors are controlled with pulse width modulation on an H-bridge. Um, to control everything, we um, decided to use Bluetooth and we used a PlayStation 3 controller. And uh, we just wanted to use a controller because we thought it was cool to use and we just wanted to play around with Bluetooth a little bit. So, do you want to talk about lights tonight? Sure. So our display feature is these eight LED lights on top. And uh, we have a photo sensor, or a photo cell, that um, when, is it is, when it's exposed to light, the resistance on it um, decreases and allowing the current to go straight to ground. Whereas if the light is covered, which we'll show in a bit, or if the sensor is covered, then the LEDs will display. So basically, if it's dark, the LEDs will run, and if it's light, they won't run. Um, and then our audio feature is just plugged straight in. Oh, and that was with the pick. Uh, the audio feature is straight into the Arduino Mega, and it plays the Spider-Man song when it first boots up and when you press the button on the controller. So for batteries, we have um, five volts that goes into our H-bridge because the servos need their own power source. And then we just powered the Arduino Mega with nine volts. So when we power it up really quick, it'll play the Spider-Man theme song. So yeah. <laughs> so when we're connecting via Bluetooth, uh, it's flashing. And once it's player one, it'll say it's connected. So I don't know if you can see, but it's on player one right now, which is connected. Yeah, you want to hold it. So we're going to initialize the servos to each of their starting positions. And um, so you can put it down if you want. So this is how it stands. Um, we put little grips, like rubber grips, on the bottom of the legs because it has a hard time gripping on table. And then it also tends to get caught on carpet sometimes. Um, our only really downfall that we had with this design that is that it, it weighs a little too much. So we coded all the movements using the arrows, and we coded um, the default stance to be a shape, the sound is a shape, and um, another shape is the actual motion that a spider does, where three legs alternate with another three legs. So um, I'll do the walking motions before we put it down on the table, and then we'll show you on the table. So. Um, since it weighs too much, uh, we had to have a really stable walking code so it doesn't fall over. So this is what the walking code looks like. It's pretty slow. And it propels itself forward that way. <laughs> <laughs> and um, backwards is just the same thing where it's opposite. Um, I'll initialize it real quick and we'll try it out. Backwards is the same thing. That looks kind of janky. Yeah. So then, um, turning is <clears throat> do turning real quick. And right is just the opposite of that. We coded the spider motion. This is the spider motion. It looks a lot more fluid and like a real spider. So we'll do that again so everyone can see. Once like this, we can show the LED function. We can turn off the light or just cover the sensor. So this is when the sensor's covered, the LEDs start light up in that pattern over and over again. We use, uh, the servos that we used are MG90s, so they're the metal gears, but they still weren't as strong as we hoped. So if we were to redesign, we'd make everything lighter and we'd use better, bigger motors. All the parts we made were 3D printed. Uh, we used PLA. Them and 
used 20% infill, but that still proved to be too heavy for the MG90s. So for, we'll do a step forward. So it's like it's a pretty, yeah, pretty, yeah, pretty small step. Moves about like a quarter of an inch, a half an inch at a time. So that's what it should do. So this is the Arduino Mega. On top of the Mega, we have a USB host shield, which is what communicates with our PlayStation controller. Right here is our H bridge where all the servos are connected. Uh, all the servos are run through the bottom of the body just to save room because it was a ton of wiring. Um, over there, uh, it's hard to see, but the pick is on that little white breadboard, and our speaker is just on top of our shell. Mm -hmm. And then we have this here, just so nothing gets caught on the Arduino, because the wiring is a little messy. And then there's holes for the, the four leads that need to come through and connect to the Arduino. Mm -hmm.